I play this Fallout miniatures game, but the tables that I play it on don't really feel epic enough. So I'm going to recreate one of the most iconic locations in the capital wasteland of Fallout 3 in order to create the biggest, most epic battle report Fallout Wasteland Warfare has ever seen. But before we do that, we've got some building to do. So when I was thinking about what location I wanted to recreate for the tabletop from Fallout 3, there are just so many just iconic locations like Megaton, Big Town, Rivet City, for example, but there's one location that is perfectly suited for this, in my opinion. Not only is it big and epic enough, but it's actually already a battlefield, and that location is the mall. A location that has been overrun by super mutants and is penned in by the Brotherhood of Steel and Talon Company. The first thing we need to do is actually get a sense of the layout of the mall, or more importantly, the section of the mall that we'll be building. In the game, this area is war-torn and filled with trenches and dugouts, and those kinds of things are perfect for creating an interesting and dynamic gaming table for our battle. We're going to focus on this lower half, though, of the mall, which for those of you who know the game, or I assume it looks like this exactly this in Washington, D.C., this is the area nearest the Washington Monument. So now I know the area I want to create, I need to make a stencil or outline of that area that I can work off. So I used some handy command codes in-game, flew up into the sky, and just got an aerial view of the landscape. So I took that aerial shot of the mall and then took a massive sheet of cardboard that was about three foot by five foot, stuck it onto a wall and then imported that aerial photo onto a projector. Projected the aerial shot onto the cardboard, resized it until it exactly fit about three foot by five foot and then just drew out the trenches in order to create the stencil. I used this cardboard stencil to draw the outline of the trenches onto the pink XPF foam and was about to begin cutting them out and sticking them to the MDF base when I encountered a massive issue. So, when I was looking for thickness of foam, uh, I decided to go for the, the thinner thickness instead of the, the thicker one, thinking it'll be fine. Uh, three centimeters seems uh, deep enough. Uh, I didn't actually measure out the miniatures for the game um, to see how everything would scale. Uh, the answer should have been the fact that it's a 32 millimeter scale miniatures game, but um, the result was this three centimeter thick foam here. Uh, if you line this up with a figure, I'm just gonna use um, one of my Minutemen. Uh, you can see that there are heads, uh, the head and shoulders kind of very slightly uh, peek out uh, above the top, which just isn't gonna work, unfortunately. Um, with, our, with the references that I've taken uh, and from kind of being in the game and running around the mall, the, the trench is actually taller than the player. Uh, not by much, but it's at least kind of above your head height. If you want to do what I usually do in order to snipe out the super mutants, you kind of got to jump and, and shoot. So um, we're going to need to go back to the underfloor heating store online and order some extra sheets to stick on to this. Um, I did a little bit of a test just with an extra uh, 20 mil, another two centimeter sheet on top of that. That looks really chunky and really thick, but size wise, um, I think that that just looks a lot better if we have smaller miniatures inside or like standard human sized minis inside, uh, especially whenever we start getting into those chunkier minis like the super mutants and sentry bots and things like that. I want them to be able to be inside these trenches without them looking like ginormous inside them. Um, so I'm gonna have to go back, order some more, which is going to delay the project because it's going to take at least another week uh, for those sheets to arrive. Which gives you plenty of time to hit the like button if you're enjoying this video and want to see me continue this series, which is a pretty cheesy but perfectly timed segue. With the extra sheets here though, it was back to glue time. I stuck the two foam layers together using some Gorilla adhesive and got my cheap hot wire cutter and spent, no joke, pretty much a few days cutting away at the foam until I had the stencil I'd made cut out to finally reveal this weirdly phallic shape. <laughs> There's a lot of work still to do, but um, I think we've got like the foundation of this board kind of in place. I mean, we've got our base level pink foam attached to our MDF now. Uh, we've got the main outline of our of the inner trench kind of in place. Uh, what we've got to do next, I think the next step really is to to put in our island here. If, you're, if you've played the game, you'll remember there's like a little island bit here that um, is connected through some uh, wooden walkways. Um, we've got to cut out some ramps which go into and out of the trench down here, uh, there's a raised 
sloping area comes up here with like um, kind of like a raised gun emplacement where a certain mutant is usually shooting at you with a missile launcher, a gun emplacement here uh, on a little raised area. Don't know if we'll get it done next time, but there's equally uh, the entrance to a Brotherhood of Steel bunker down in this area as well. So I think putting in all of those kind of landmarks will be our next step. Uh, and once they're in place, we can kind of start to be adding detail uh, and weathering and uh, kind of the finer pieces uh, that will really help this board start to come together. If you're excited to see this build continue and you want to help me get it finished, you can actually check out a link to my Patreon, which I've just recently set up down in the video description. But if you want to find out how to make some really cheap modular roads for your own tabletop games for less than £5, you're going to want to click this video right here.